Suzanne Monk, the founder of Reopen America. It's an organization that supports the president's call to get things moving again. Suzanne, you've also helped coordinate some of the lockdown protests that we've seen in Michigan and Oregon. Presumably, you don't agree with Governor Andrew Cuomo. I do not agree with Governor Andrew Cuomo, and thank you for having me here on the show. We are very concerned about the effects beyond COVID-19 of these shutdowns, the economic effects, but we're also very concerned about the people who are not getting regular medical treatment because the hospitals are not accepting any patients other than COVID patients or emergency patients. So we have folks who are not getting their cancer treatments, they're not getting dialysis treatments. The shutdown is a lot bigger debate with, than just the economy versus health. It's actually health versus health, and we're concerned about that. But is it really just a question of hospital space? Because the situation for uninsured Americans has also always been a huge talking point, not just in your country, but for those of us who live outside of the United States, some of us are amazed that people who don't have insurance can't get proper health care. And yet, because of the coronavirus pandemic, Donald Trump said at the beginning of April that the federal government will give cash payments to people who are not insured to have treatment in hospital. So in a way, won't people be better looked after because of the chaos the pandemic has created to uh, people's health? For COVID treatments, he will be offering those payments, but not for other medical treatments. And in fact, we in America have a employer-based insurance system where a lot of people get their insurance from their employer. We just put millions, tens of millions of people out of work. So that's actually a health crisis in and of itself. These individuals no longer have access to that same health care, nor do they have access to the basic economics to take care of themselves, to provide food shelter, clothing, vitamins, exercise. We're locking people in our homes. So the the health of the individual is being affected both economically and physically by these shutdowns. And certainly there are many states across the country, many counties across the country with very few deaths and very few cases. I have to disagree with what your correspondent said and that everywhere is increasing. In fact, many areas are not increasing. These areas could certainly begin the reopening process. And what we are seeing here in the United States is a lot of misinformation in regards to the number of deaths and the kind of deaths that they are recording. We are recording all deaths in the United States that have the COVID virus or antibodies present as a COVID death, even if that is an accidental death or a death from another cause. So we question the numbers themselves. We'd like some real data. We uh, we put on the CDC to actually start putting out whether or not is a causal relationship with the COVID virus or if it is just present. Those are two entirely different things. Now, the thing is that uh, your campaign and Donald Trump's call for states to reopen, it's not particularly being accepted by the general American public. The Washington Post and University of Maryland together conducted a poll. You may have seen the numbers. And in terms of the amount of Americans who are worried about becoming seriously ill from the coronavirus is the same as it was two weeks ago, 63%. 74% of people said that they don't want uh, theaters, dine-in restaurants to open. More than eight in 10, 82% said movie theaters shouldn't open. Overall, the majority voted against the reopening also of gun stores, barber shops, hair salons, retail shops, and golf courses. So you're going against what people want. Well, thank heavens we don't uh, decide our policy based on polls because we would have President Hillary Clinton at this point. We base our policy on data, on sound evidence. We are calling on all of our state governors and all of our mayors to provide that transparent evidence to their constituents to explain the continued shutdown orders. And if they can't explain them, we certainly need to begin the reopening process. People are frustrated. They're financially concerned. They're they're frightened not only for themselves, but frankly, for the world. We've talked about food shortages right here on your program. When America has food shortages, the world starves. So we're gravely concerned about the impact of the American shutdown, not just on Americans, but on the global economy. We need to reopen safely. If you can go to Target, if you can go to Walmart, if you can go to these essential stores safely, we can do the same procedures, same protective measures for our small businesses, and we can get these stores open. 
OK, let me just finally give you a quote from Rick Wilson. You know Rick Wilson, a former well-known Republican strategist. And this is what he says. This is about the philosophy of groups like yours and the philosophy in the White House, it appears. He says they've decided in a very utilitarian kind of way that the political damage from a collapsed economy is greater than the political damage from losing as many as 90,000 more Americans just in June. And he says we're witnessing the full-scale application of a kind of grisly real politic that is a clear willingness, he says, to trade lives for the Dow Jones. What do you say to that? I would disagree with that completely because we are going to see lives lost because of the shutdowns. The UN itself predicts 175 million people will be put into starvation conditions due to the shutdown orders. So I would gravely argue against the idea that it is economics versus lives. It is lives versus lives. How many lives are we willing to risk because of the shutdown effects? We were not shut down to prevent the entire spread of the virus. We were told to shut down so that we could prevent the hospitals from being overwhelmed, so that we could flatten the curve. With the predictions and numbers we are seeing today, we are well below the, the hospital overwhelm line. That's why they told us we shut down. We've met that requirement. Americans did take that sacrifice. Now that we see those numbers are down and we see hospitals actually closing wings, actually furloughing nurses because they do not have patients in the hospitals, we are in no risk in the vast majority of the country of overwhelming our hospital system, which is the reason we shut down. It is time to reopen. Okay, Suzanne Monk, thank you so much indeed for joining us on TRT World. Appreciate it.